Micronesian Seminar brings you Island Topics. Come with me on a journey to the paradise of the Micronesian Islands, where beautiful white sandy beaches sparkle like diamonds where emerald ocean swells and crashes majestically against rainbow coral reefs, where flowers of every shape, color, and smell display their earthen wares, where bare-chested loincloth islanders leisurely strolled under shaded everglades. Let yourself go and experience the serenity of this idyllic lifestyle. Sit back and relax. Let a fragrant breeze, the ocean waves, calm your weary soul. Bring out the sakao, the tuba, the beer, and the liquor. Bring out the foods, the women, the ukuleles, and guitars. Sing, drink, be merry. Welcome to our paradise island. Come, come closer. Listen, what do you hear? Look, what do you see? A woman was married uh, to a man and she became pregnant and he thought it was someone else's child. And so he was so resentful and so angry that when he would come home from work, he would abuse her and he would hit her in the stomach and he would knock her off the, the chair into the floor and then rub her face in whatever food that she was preparing, if it was rice or whatever. And uh, another very critical incident that uh, we had here in Pompeii that one husband actually beat his wife to death with a hammer. Uh, this is uh, too much as far as I'm concerned. And I could see that this person was not able to see correctly and would run into the door and would not be able to see the desk well enough. And I realized that there were bruises on her head and talked to her. She told me that she was being hit on the head by her husband repeatedly with an object that looked like a stick, not as big as a bat. But he would hit her. She was beginning to say that she would kill herself shortly, that she had no interest in living. In. And the worst thing is here, sir, that similar matters are also involved with incest. I don't know if I have to say this, but the incest are going on right now where this fella here married to this lady that already has a daughter, 18 years or 16 or whatever, and they perform incest. And this is what the thing that uh, I really want to stop right now. There has been a serious increase of domestic violence in Micronesia in recent years. Just within the last two months alone, there have been three separate cases of Micronesian women being beaten to death by their husbands. Many more are injured in their own homes sometimes so badly that they must be hospitalized. Children, too, are maltreated, seriously beaten or burned, or sometimes subjected to sexual abuse by other family members. What will happen to these children later in their lives? Do they bear the inner scars of their abuse? Will the scars heal in time? Will these former victims perpetuate the cycle of violence to which they've been exposed? There can be no doubt that domestic violence occurs today. Some would argue that it's an old practice, however, one that is condoned by island custom. Others attribute its increase today to the host of social changes that have swept over the islands. What do we make of domestic violence today? How should we deal with it? We welcome you to our panel discussion on domestic violence. With us today are Dina Takeshi, president and founder of the Women Association Network, William Aperium, 
FSM coordinator for child abuse and neglect, and Joshua Phillip, mental health and substance abuse manager, FSM, Department of Health Services. What do we mean by domestic violence? Tina, suppose we ask you to start off. Thank you, Father Lisa. Uh, domestic violence uh, refers to any physical, sexual, psychological, and mental abuse that takes place within the confine of the family. What about you, William? It also ties in with abuse and neglect, uh, abuse and neglect as a matter of fact. It's uh, hard to, quite difficult to divorce the two. And if I may uh, step, uh, go a step further, uh, the same is true with mental health, too. How severe or widespread is this domestic violence problem in Micronesia today? The daily occurrence of uh, domestic violence is very high. Um, as I was recounting some statistics before, there is about um, 10 cases that, it, that you can report on a weekly basis. Uh, this is taken, let's say, for porn day by itself, and uh, about 20 out of other cases are unreported. 20 cases just in porn day? Uh, just in porn day, if a we week. talk about a week. I usually see, on the average, of 10 to 12 uh, people a month who, in their complaints, mention that they have been struck or drug around the floor, as one person told me. Um, and this happens, but it is not all that is happening. For every case I see, there are at least two or three others that I hear about. And some of the worst cases that I hear about, I never see. However, the, uh, the degree of the violence varies. It may be just... Uh, slapping verbal. around, yeah, yeah. verbal, It'd be withdrawal of food or uh, social uh, isolation, and then you can go up as high as physically be uh, beating mm. and bashing, and then you can go as high as um, actually ostracizing the individuals from her families or her mm. social networks up to the terminal, termination of murder. And we have seen that uh, recently yeah. in the two cases, one in November right. and one in October and one in November. Uh, Joshua? It, it has increased it's a, severely over the past few years to the point where people don't, are not able to hold, hold their or control their emotions. Uh, William, what do you see on the child abuse side? Child abuse and neglect is very prevalent in Micronesia. Between October 1993 and October 1994, 477 cases of child abuse and neglect were confirmed. And this is not counting the state of the art. There are really four reasons uh, many, many reasons, but four major reasons why domestic violence occurs. One is the need for control or power. Another is the tremendous stress that some people uh, uh, in, in their jobs, uh, in their family relationships that some men have. And then um, it is a learned behavior. Many people who abuse their wives or other people learn to do so by watching their own family members do it and learn that this is the way you handle a situation. And indeed, it is a very effective way of handling a confrontation because it stops the other person cold. And then there's another, another thing is isolation. Uh, isolation, the loss of family support system through death or if they move off island is a powerful factor in making people upset and angry and want to strike out because they feel so helpless and so alone. But some people say that the domestic violence is part of the culture. Some people say that this is as uh, traditional as breadfruit, picking breadfruit or uh, growing yams. Uh. My response to that question is 
is to deny it. I do not think that the Micronesian society sanctioned domestic violence. That it happens, yes. And that it happens at degrees, varying degrees, probably becoming a problem, uh, certainly is, is certainly true. That happens. But that overall, in general, the Micronesian societies traditionally, looking at the traditional culture, sanction domestic violence is, my answer is no. Some say it is not a problem. It is the way it has been ever since the beginning of uh, the Pombian culture, of the Ephesian cultures. The Inequality of male and female, for example. Um, this is true in a Micronesian society. I suppose we should face the reality that there is a certain degree of inequality uh, between man and woman. And I think because of that reason, the perception, the idea uh, that male have some kind of a right to treat their spouses in this particular case uh, as if they are owned. In general, however, I don't think it is a fair generalization that men in general abuse women in general. There used to be a preventive mechanism that operates along with those kind of behaviors. Whereas nowadays, those social preventive measures uh, are diminishing, weakening, fading out. You talk about preventive measures. What, what do you mean? I'm re uh, specifically referring to uh, uh, the social system in the older days or in the past days. And how do they uh, prevent uh, this from happening. Uh, let's take a family, for instance. Uh, uh, the father and the mother, they raise their children. And the older children, if the pa uh, father and mother got so busy, the older children uh, take care of the younger ones. At the same time, there is this horizontal widespread uh, a support system that uh, is also in existence, for example. There are the aunts, the uncles, grandparents on both sides, uh, the head of the lineage, uh, the clan system worked very uh, uh, well those days. When a wife and a husband uh, got in a fight, brothers, sisters, Parents, uncles, aunts, they all jump in to intervene. Tina, do you see the same thing in, uh, in domestic violence of, uh, uh, with uh, women as uh, the abused? I, I believe so. It's part of the same line that uh, Willie is saying. Um, it, because of the role that the extended family and the clans and the head of the families uh, play usually play before was very powerful in safeguarding uh, protection of women and children. Let's pin that down a little bit. I am a married man and I'm angry at my wife. Before I pick up something to uh, bop her with, uh, or possibly I do, I bop her, she runs out of the house crying. Um, what are the forces that operate on me? the psychological forces or the motivational forces, if you want, to stop me from giving her that bop before she runs out of the house. I'm talking about in, in times past. I believe one of the first impulses that would, uh, you would have is to, uh, to fear that the, uh, your wife's parents won't let her come back to you. When the marriage is finalized, it's not just a marriage of you and your wife. It's a marriage of families and clans and systems. So when you marry that wife, uh, that uh, member of that clan, uh, all the clan is out there to make sure that you do not 
abuse their members. And if you do, then it will be a major embarrassment of your, not only your, uh, pa your parents' family, but the whole uh, clan of your family. <laughs> mm. So in the past, when I uh, bop my wife and she runs crying out of the house and she goes back to her family, I have to deal with the problem of how do I get her back now? Uh, do I go crawling back to the family or what, uh, what, what takes place at that point? So here in Tonte, uh, uh, you have to go and uh, apologize to the parents, uh, following certain rituals where you bring a, a sakawa along, pound it, offer the, the cup of atonement. What would I do in Chuk if I wanted to get my wife back? Uh, it's follow similar like similarity with Tonte and uh, custom. Uh, you have to first get your family or the head of your clan or your family chief to go and take you to go to the family and ask for forgiveness. And you can also uh, make some sort of atonement. They give you whatever social um, consequences they think they might say that you would go and you stay away for an extended period of time until you calm down before you can actually come back and show your face within the community. So that's an interesting system because I face problems on both sides. I have to go and ask somebody in my own family, please come with me as, I, uh, as we humble ourselves before the, or represent me, as we humble ourselves before the family of, of my wife. And then I have to wait the outcome there to find out what the, my wife's family and is right saying. there is the defense mechanism. Uh, uh, you have to think twice before you pop your wife because you have to think about approaching the elder members of your family to help you go and uh, request uh, the return of your wife. I see what you mean. That's a formidable <laughs> <laughs> task to do, a humbling one, and, and something that would have cause persons to, uh, to think twice before they did uh, do something to their wives. If I could just interject here also that, that you can only do that once or twice. Mm -hmm. But once it goes beyond, beyond that, uh, you pop your wife or my sister or whatever, my uh, brothers and my clan men will come and pop you. <laughs> okay. So, so we've, had, we've got not only the humiliation and the shame and everything, but, uh, but the fear, yeah, the physical fear. Yes. Joshua, you, you were going to say something before, weren't you? Long ago, I don't think none of this happened like you said, because, uh, because of the cultural uh, system really intact. None of the little violence occurred if there was in the past. But now it's, it's happening more because of the breakdown of this uh, natural helping system, so to speak. Well, it seems from what you're saying that the protection was embedded in this, um, shall we say, extended family system yeah. in, the, in the past, the extended family system that we've seen in every part of Micronesia. Now, today, as you put it, uh, we're without those uh, protections or defense mechanisms. Uh, the, the family system, the family system which, which did intervene to help protect the, uh, the wife and children isn't there anymore. Basically, it's true that we, uh, in olden days, we have all those uh, traditional extended family social services protection that we were alluded to earlier, but also because of the rapid modernization and all the fast economic uh, developments and the push to be recognized by the outside world and to be accepted as a nation uh, seeking unity and seeking its place in the outside world. In that uh, thrust to push forward, we have embraced uh, certain changes. Uh, Tina mentioned dollar and I cut on to that because I think it's uh, the dollar is the key problem here. All right, uh, in the old days where people live mainly on subsistence economy, uh, it is easy for a big family or a clan 
or a lineage to share their lives together. But I have this old theory that, uh, that the changes, to follow up on something you said, these changes were not deliberate at all. Right. These changes were unintentional, but they were structural. They were yes. structural, meaning that they, they didn't come from a change in values or attitudes on the part of people, but they came through uh, a new system, mm -hmm. uh, a new system that was, uh, that was being grafted on society in place of the old system, right. in place of the old land-based, uh, you know, kin-oriented uh, system. And so what we have now, what we have now is, uh, is a society, or at least a lineage system, a clan system, a, uh, a social system that's very much fragmented. Do you see any way of slowing down the changes? Uh, I think that it would be difficult to slow down, but I think we should s uh, take time to sit back and critically analyze what we are getting into. And uh, one of the ways we are doing that, I, I think, is by focusing on the social manifestations that are happening today. Suicide, for example, increasing alcohol abuse and substance abuse, this increasing in domestic violence, particularly in this severity of this uh, violence perpetuated against the weaker member of the society and the children. When we look at our society, just look at our island, nations, we're very small, isolated community. And for many years, we just sailed among ourselves. And when we meet our own island people, we, our cultures are almost the same, island people. But I think once a society like ours, once there is an exposure to the outside world, when we start changing and adapting to new new ideas, we start losing something. Beatings seem to be an outpouring of male anger, sometimes even rage, uh, against the weaker members of the family. Uh, where does this male anger stem from? How do we explain it? I think part of it is from the stereotype that uh, male or men are supposed to be aggressive, they're supposed to be tough, uh, they're supposed to be relentless, you know. <laughs> and uh, I think that's part of the reason why uh, men are more or less always ready to hit. That men had an outlet, an aggressive outlet, in warfare, and in competition for that matter. Uh, is that outlet gone today? Uh, the people from some of the FSM states are known to be warriors, for example. They're known to like to see or participate at a quite uh, frequent rate of conflict, of fighting. And then at some point after that, apparently somehow that practice stopped and then it, it goes into expressions of dance and whatnot so that you can show your, uh, you know, your, your macho, your, your bravery. But, but why didn't we do it more expressively in dances? That's much better. Men in the Micronesian society bear a heavy burden. The old ways that they used to succeed, building the best canoe, racing and things, and being the best warrior, aren't available anymore. They have to now go into an office or into some money, gain, uh, money economy and gain a living by making money. And for some reason, the wife doesn't have dinner ready or she gives him a smart answer when he asks her a question. Then he loses control because he's insecure and he's harassed, he's stressed and he hits her and depending on the reaction or how hard he hits her he may hit her again anyhow she starts crying and carrying on and the child is nearby and the kid is acting out and she whops the kid one to, to, because she can't take anymore and the child is a uh, he has nobody to hit except a younger sibling 
or the dog. We also see that as women are beginning to get into the work employment force, they're not doing the responsibility at home. Besides taking the double burden of home and taking over for the men while they're going politics and work, now we also are working. And I just don't know how we survive. And I think the main problem is over lack of supervision and role modeling for these poor children. So you're saying, if I can summarize a little bit, that uh, we've been hurt as we've gone from a, a multi-member family or a multi-parent family to a two-parent family. We've been hurt especially as these two parents are responsible for work. And uh, we have not only lopped off all of these other people who are caretakers, but we've also made it very difficult for either of the parents to provide the care that they're there to give. Yeah, I think so because of the geographical mobility, you know, your own sense of material possessions and getting yourself to get up on a social and economic uh, prestige and stuff. I remember um, Innocente Onesam telling me a story once of uh, a story of something that happened in, uh, in his island. Um, he said a baseball team was walking off the field. Uh, a fellow, the third baseman on the team, walked off angry at his other teammates who made several errors and who lost the game. And uh, he saw his four children sniveling, you know, who came up to him saying, Papa, Papa. Mm -hmm. And uh, he smacked two of them on the face and scolded the other two. The, uh, the family becomes a surrogate, you know, the sacrificial victim, uh, the uh, whipping boy for the, uh, the father's anger. Definitely, he wasn't mad at the kids. The kids didn't make him lose. It was the other team that defeated him, but he couldn't pop, it, uh, pop the other team because he didn't have the power. So we're talking about power, too. You, you're not really mad at your family, but it's other things that brought on, not particularly from your extended family, but other things, other things. Because the woman in, and a husband are raising the children to come up to be spouse abusers themselves because they're they're modeling this in their own home so they're setting future citizens up to be to solve problems with their fists and they go out into society beating on people how important the factor is alcohol and what we're seeing today uh, alcohol plays a very major factor in the domestic violence that is occurring now we have a tremendous amount of beer and and um, other alcoholic beverages coming in. Um, over 250,000 cases, according to one researcher, a year. Now that's all being drunk. Uh, a lot of the cases, uh, domestic violent cases, are alcohol-related, about 50%. But that doesn't mean that all alcoholic drinkers beat their wife, like Mr. Abraham said. And on the other hand, it does not mean also that uh, those who do not, do not drink do not abuse their or uh, commit domestic violence. Fifty percent, as we said earlier, of the domestic violence is alcohol related. Fifty percent? Fifty percent. I'm surprised it's so low. We get fifty percent of the suicides also. Uh, it's underreported, uh, remember. It's, it's yeah, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> but I, I don't think that uh, alcohol would actually cause domestic violence. It's, yeah. it's a major contributing yes. factor. Okay. To, yeah. okay, we agree on that. Then. Yes. What about the solution for the problem that we've been discussing? What do we do? Yeah, I think uh, but it's <clears throat> quite impossible to uh, reincarnate the past and live the way uh, people used to. Uh, I think what ought to be done and can be done and needs to be done these days is to develop coping mechanisms that will be fair and will be relevant for the modern lifestyles. When, when uh, a system's been broken down and we are adopting a new system and we've, we've in a fast way, fast pace, and we've not had the chance to really 
sit back and look at it. Uh, we haven't been able to develop a good counseling system. You see, in our culture, it's, it's really hard to share some things. Sometimes it's not, we don't really outrightly share our things, information. We hold things back. Even if we're not good counselors, but with the information we have and we're sharing and using our own God-giving knowledge and skills, we may be able to help some of these uh, perpetrators of this violence. Along with the counseling, uh, the need for counseling that Josh uh, has just mentioned, I think uh, awareness mm. is very critical. Uh, the public, not just parents, not just children, not just counselors, the uh, public as a whole needs to be made aware of the existing problems uh now nowadays uh, it's it's become an embarrassment thing for like the victims to report the women are not proud of this they don't want people to know it they do not want people to know it even in the privacy of my office with the door closed they just don't want it to, because they feel ashamed they feel they've done something and also when they report uh, they would draw their cases they, they make complaints and they withdraw later. We heard this from the police. And what do we do when we get there? Try to make the arrest, or even sometimes we make the arrest, and the wives, they come up and withdraw the case. So therefore, these incidences are continuously happening because uh, the husband is taking advantage of uh, the law and uh, even their families. They beat him up, next day they come and withdraw the cases. I think we need to encourage these victims, whoever they are, to really file that complaint, go, th go through that motion. There is uh, a disincentive for women to bring charges against their husbands when they're abused. There's an economic disincentive. There is a psychological disincentive. And, and there may be a cultural disincentive. Many times, when we get there, no statements. The wife cannot make a statement because she's afraid of the husband. And if they do so, uh, place a complaint, the next day they would throw the complaint because they know when the husband come out of the jail, he's gonna, she's going to get beaten up again. Because these perpetrators need to be responsible for their own actions. The court should be is somewhat leniency because what we're doing right now is that we don't have a complainant and then the cases will thrown and thrown away. Gotta have somebody to file a complaint. And if these victims continue to not report and not speak out, it is encouraging the perpetrators to continue. Yes, uh, I do agree that the victims need to be serious about uh, taking action. Mm -hmm. Along with that, I personally believe that the perpetrators need a lot of education too. Mm -hmm. They need to be counseled, made aware of the consequences of the, their behavior, whether it's beating up the wife or beating up the children or issuing out punishments, what those kind of actions are doing to the rest of the members of the family, emotionally, physically, developmentally, the abusers do suffer as well. They suffer loss of self-esteem. They suffer depression. We, when they realize what they've done, and they wake up and very often they can look at their wife and see what they've done because they can see the bruises. And then they feel, they feel ashamed. So the abusers suffer as well as the spouses who suffer physically, emotionally. We don't necessarily have to throw them in the cell right away. 
uh, I believe in uh, also helping them within their homes before I throw them in jail. But, see, we've come from a system that's done more than just preach virtue. The system has made it difficult for people to do bad things to their wives and children for reasons that we've discussed. It's embarrassing, difficult, and uh, even physically dangerous for a man, or it was, for him to uh, beat on his wife and children in the past. Today, what do we have to, uh, besides preaching virtue, uh, to prevent people from doing the quickest, easiest thing to uh, let their anger gush? So who do we have now? We have surrogate families. We have, we have women's groups that are forming. Women's groups are just new to me in the islands. I've been here six years. But I, the last two years have been the years that I've seen women's groups forming. I, I firmly believe that what Joshua said about creating, establishing a system that would take the place of that extended family system, uh, I also agree with the public education. But I also, along with, with those two recommendations, I also, first of all, for the nation to recognize domestic violence as a problem. And then finally, um, there's legal assistance, legal aid. If the situation gets to the point where a lawyer needs to be called in, there is free legal advice on this island for women. If there is within a culture an attitude of respect for individuals, then that culture will do, or that society will do what's necessary um, to promote that respect and to ensure protection. And I think that it's necessary for individuals to have a clear understanding of what their culture and their tradition uh, holds as principles. I, I would be interested to see those perpetrators, who they are, whether they go to church, and how often they go to church. Because I think God never meant for a man or a husband to abuse his wife and children. If anything, it's just on the contrary. There is to help, nurture them, develop them, and they sh they're, they're to work together, help each other. And this basic principle is, is, is a godly principle that we need to remind ourselves. And in order to be able to remind it of that, we should go to church. We should go to church. <laughs> you stole my thunder. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. uh, I want to ask one more question. Will new legislation help? What about the uh, legal system? Will that help? Punish him hard. That's it. Um, it is within the state's prerogative uh, to bring charges whenever there is uh, assault, battery, or uh, a homicide. Um, however, if those individuals who have personal knowledge of the incident um, refuse to cooperate, then that is going to affect the state's case. The question is, does there need to be more specificity to the law in order to protect women. Most of the time when people uh, hear the word law, right away they think about jail, court and jails. Some lawmakers themselves are hesitant, reluctant, and unwilling to uh, sponsor such laws, claiming that uh, such law will put a lot of parents in jail. Certainly, Penalties such as um, incarceration, jailing, are not necessarily going to be uh, going to solve the problem. That may do nothing but further fracture the tenuous family ties, um, and and ultimately destroy the family. When the, our aim for having the law is definitely not to put people in jail. 
but to have something to work from and to have protection for the children, the, the family as a whole. Uh, it's for prevention, not for uh, conviction of criminals. Okay, so the, the law is an it's, instructor. It's an instructor and it's a necessary thing to have. Uh, thank you, Tina, William, uh, Joshua, for joining us today for our panel discussion. We invite our viewers to be with us next month as we take up in island topics health care in Micronesia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a small island. We cannot afford this. We cannot continue this kind of exercise. Uh, we love each other and we want to work uh, together. And now uh, we go to church, everybody, you know, you worship God and whatever you, and these things are going on every day, every day, every day. Uh, I, I want to stop it. That's all we're still doing.